Hello my fellow Dream Chasers, Kenzie Retro here. Yes, I am aware I look an absolute mess. This is coming off soon, don't you worry. And I will shave as well, that way I look a bit more presentable. But anyway, uh, personal care aside, welcome to the first of Kenzie Retro's reviews for 2020. Now, is it a film or is it a game? It's a game. As you may have seen from my channel update on Monday, that's how I'm recording this, I am recording this on Wednesday, May 13th, I am here to review Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Now, those who know me well know how highly anticipated this game has been for me. E3 2017, it was announced, and it released March 11th this year, and now, two months on, does the game have a strong case to be a candidate a game of the year well let's see if we can start off the decade strong with my review of ori and the will of the wisps and before we get started spoiler alert now in effect if you haven't played the game yet so let's start off as always with the story. Now for those that don't know how my reviews work, I have um, I have five sections to focus on in regards to these reviews. Story, characters, visuals, gameplay, and my favorite, the soundtrack. And oh boy am I looking forward to the soundtrack. So, here we go, the story we pick up right from where we left off at the end of Ori and the Blind Forest. The owl egg has hatched, and we have a cute little baby owl! Oh, it's so cute! And what I'll, what I'll do is, um, I will have the... Uh, what I can do is, I can get the visuals... Um, not the visual subjects but like um the the cutscenes and the gameplay from the game itself i'm actually going to use my playthrough as like as like uh, the the footage it, so it's not just me on camera all the time so yeah i'm, I'm so yeah i'm looking at getting the uh, i'm looking at i'm i'm, I'm looking at I'm looking at freshening things up as far as the reviews are concerned. Uh, I mean, I, I can do it with the game reviews, no problem. The film reviews, you'll just have to stick with me on camera for the time being. But nevertheless, uh, story. We start off with a cute little baby owl, but uh, one of his wings is uh, not quite up to scratch. Where, uh, yeah, because because the coo, that's the name of the baby owl, um, uh, child of the uh, late... Kuro. R.I.P. Kuro. Uh, yeah. Um, can't fly properly, but Ori luckily has uh, Kuro's feather from the first game. And don't be too surprised if there are a lot of references to Ori and the Blind Forest in this review. Because the two gel so well together that. It's difficult to play one without the other. I didn't play Ori. I didn't play Ori and Blind Forest first. Ori and Wisp, but I digress. And then we see Ori and Ku flying through the various areas that we saw in the first game: Mount Horu, the Forlorn Ruins, among others. And uh, and then we see, and then we actually see where the um, the sun um, the sunstone. Uh, I I think that's what it is. Um, it, it, it's where you get the it's where you get the uh, the key to unlock uh, Mount Horu uh, for the end of Blind Forest, and then you get the storm. The feather get the feather comes off Ku. Luckily, Ori manages to catch it, and the two are separated. And the plot of the game is basically reuniting Ku and Ori. But that's not all. With it being the will of the wisps, you need to find four wisps for this giant wisp tree or whatever it is. 
Um, and yeah, it is. Whew. I thought the first game was emotional. This cranked it up tenfold, in particular with this particular moment. <laughs> Here we go! left that part of the playthrough as a cliffhanger for the next episode because it wouldn't have it wouldn't have made sense otherwise it would not made have, it would not have made sense otherwise then oh boy Ku's actually injured quite badly at this point and you have to you have to recover the rest of the wisps and then, oh, oh, that ending, that ending. <sighs> yeah, that is, that is not easy to get through without tearing up. I mean, heck, I was in tears throughout the playthrough. How often do you see a 27 year old man in tears over a video game or a film? Just for the record, uh, one film that gets me in tears every single time is Inside Out. But I might take, but I might keep that for a, a retro review, or I'll keep that for my Pixel Run of Kingdom of Isolation. And no, that is not, and no, I will not apologise for shamelessly plugging another series on my channel. But nevertheless, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, the it is one of the most powerful stories I have ever experienced. Even more powerful than the first game. And the way Will of the Wisps ends, please Moon Studios, please make a trilogy out of this, please. And if we play nice, can we get a Studio Ghibli film with you, please? No joke, the visual style of Ori and the Will of the Wisps, it would fit perfectly for a Studio Ghibli film. So yeah, overall, the story I would definitely give an 11. Yeah, 11 out of 10. Sue me. Characters next. I've already mentioned a couple of the characters. Uh, Gumo is back. Naru is back. Ku is back, and of course, the star of the show, Ori, is back. And there is just incredible depth to these characters. But that's but those not but those aren't the only characters you gotta worry uh, gotta look forward to um, throughout this playthrough, uh, throughout the game. Oh no, there's also um, there's also other characters like Quallock and. Also, the antagonist of the game, Shriek. And, oh, 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 boy, oh, boy. Oh, that is not a pleasant sight to see. That is not a pleasant sight. I thought Kuro was unsettling. This increases that tenfold. Look at when we're introduced to Shriek for the, uh, for the first time. Come on, Ku, where are you? Oh, there we are! Oh. Of course, celebrations get cut short in these sort of games. 
Oh boy. I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, that's definitely a boss. Oh, game! Not with this theme! Not with the theme of the game! Stop! Yeah, pretty terrifying, don't you think? So yeah, uh, some, of the, some of the other characters we have to look forward to seeing. We have... Uh, we have Tok, who is uh, a well, that, a crane-like bird creature uh, who's one of the many characters that can help you with your abilities and skills throughout the game which I'll get into in the gameplay section later. Uh, then you've got the Moki who are one of the, one of the key side characters of the game and then you've also got uh, Bor uh, boar, who's uh, a bear, who's actually asleep, and then, and then, yeah, that's bit, yeah, that's basically what you're gonna do to wake him up. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, on top of this being, on top of this being a review, folks, uh, I'm also giving you some uh, little tips to help uh, make uh, speedrunning this game a little bit easier for you. Yeah, there's one achievement for speedrunning this game. Speedrunning uh, only in the blind forest in three hours, piece of cake for me at this point. Will of the Wisps, you gotta do it in four hours to get that achievement. <laughs> yeah, and then you've got Quarlock, who's a frog like creature, and oh boy, the boss fight for him, that is not pleasant. And then, you've, and, and then you've got other characters on top of that as well. And then you've got, and then, like I mentioned, you've got Shriek, and again, just like Kuro, a tragic backstory where born with birth defects uh, and uh, tries to play with uh, other baby owls, but uh, the, the mother owls, oh my word, they are very terrifying to look at as well. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, rejected just because they look different from everybody, just because Shriek looks different from everybody else. How relatable is that to me? Why I hear you ask? Because I've been in that position as well. Why have I been in that position before? Because I felt like an outcast. I felt like I didn't fit in. With me being autistic, it can affect how I communicate with people. Being left out of groups just because I was different from everybody else. Being bullied just because I was different from everybody else. That particular part of the game hit very close to home for me. But overall, there is a lot of depth. The depth is just incredible with these characters. So the characters get an 11. And the visuals. <laughs> visuals oh. just from that just from the clips that I've shown you previously not much else needs to be said apart from it is visually beautiful I mean I did not think they could improve on visual perfection in Ori and the Blind Forest yeah Ori and the Blind Forest is a perfect game for me this is a perfect sequel for me. How is it so perfect? Stay tuned to find out. Oh boy, uh, visuals. Yeah, like I, said, like I say, not much else needs to be said beyond that. It's just visually incredible. It's, I mean, like I said, how can you improve on perfection? Well, all you know all the wisps just showed that right there. And now, on to the gameplay. Whew. Now, 
there's a few gameplay sections that I haven't actually done yet in this game. But, from what I've seen, um, uh, yes, I have beaten the game, just to be clear, I have beaten the game. So this is where, this is where a lot of focus is going to go into, it, as far as this review is concerned. So, with the gameplay side of things, uh, they've got a wide expanse of new gameplay uh, mechanics, and and I'll and I'll just I'll just showcase some of them uh, in action right now. So there you go. So th those are just some of the new uh, mechanics uh, coming into play, especially when rather than having uh, Sen on board. You are able to you are able to use uh, some sort of uh, spirit blade to just hack and slash away at any enemies that get in your way. Not to mention you just not to mention you become the green arrow. Uh, not necessarily with the, the green the cape and whatnot, but you get to you get a bow and arrow in this game as well. I mean, th I mean those are just two of the many new gameplay mechanics this game has, and. There's also new abilities combined with the old ability, combined with some old abilities from the first game, so that there's something, uh, so that there's something new in the, so that there's a combination of something new with something familiar at the same time. And how do you strike a balance like that? Well, for starters, there's so, so like I said, I was like I say, um, I say just from that screen there, just from that screen there, that shows you the um, the abilities that there that there are throughout uh, the game. On top of the fact that you've got spirit shards as well, which you can upgrade and and the more pro and there's there's actually ways to get more uh, projects. There's actually ways to get um, more uh, spirit shard slots um, as you progress uh, through the game with more. And there's, I mean, there's, there's quests. There's quest lines in this game. How's that even possible? So there's definitely a sense. So there's definitely an RPG element to the games, uh, to, to the game here. Uh, in the same way that there was a, an RPG element to um, Ori in the Blind Forest, but instead of uh, going through um, ability trees, uh, you can actually purchase abilities, upgrade abilities, buy shards, upgrade shards. It's incredible to see how expansive the gameplay has become, especially especially now that. Um, Especially now that we've got two games under our belt, and they are just absolutely incredible to see. Then there's, and then talking of some of the new gameplay mechanics here, um, one of the biggest things I was, um, one of the biggest things I was intrigued by was the spirit trials. Yeah, there's spirit trials throughout the game. There's like eight of them, uh, to be exact, and uh, you get. Uh, you, get, you get spirit light uh, as a reward for uh, beating these uh, spirit trials and with the spirit trials the faster you go the higher up on the leaderboard you get and um, you've just got your bait you've just got your base abilities for this so uh, you can't you can't use things like triple jump or things like that you just have to use uh, dash bash and double jump uh, among other things those are like, like, those, like I say, those are just the base abilities you can use throughout these uh, spirit trials. And while they can be very challenging at times, as I am uh, showing eloquently with this particular um, uh, with this uh, with this particular spirit trial, um, they are very rewarding. And there's also time trials as well. Time trials for what? Well, time trials just for time trials are just for a little bit of fun, uh, where. Uh, the time trials you can go through particular moments in the game, everything from the escape sequence to the boss battles. Yeah, 
escape sequences are back, and we've got boss battles in the game as well. You've got boss battles against Quarlock, you've got Spider to take care of, where you end up cons uh, end up uh, in darkness if you're not careful. And that's one of the new abilities, you're able to have um, uh, Flash as one of the uh, abilities to be able to have, uh, an to have this aura of light around you so you don't get consumed by the darkness and one hit KO'd. Yeah, good luck beating this game without dying. But overall, uh, the only issue I had with uh, the gameplay here is the the minor technical issues that it took. It took a while for the. Um, it sometimes took a while for the um, map to load. Uh, there were even a couple of occasions which, which actually happened on stream, no joke, um, where I ended up suffering uh, game crashes. So that was fun. But uh, at the end of the day, despite those technical issues, those technical issues are just minor. They didn't detract from the experience in any capacity for me whatsoever. So gameplay, another 11 from me. And last but by no means least, the soundtrack. Thank you, Gareth Coker. Listening to the theme of the game when the game was pre-installed onto my Xbox and I actually got a screenshot of like the start menu and I put it up onto my YouTube Instagram not too long afterwards and oh, I knew at that point I wasn't emotionally prepared and I wasn't wrong. Gareth Coker back on track to create another soundtrack masterpiece. One of my one of my particular favorite sections of the uh, of the soundtrack which you're listening to right now, Luma Pulls. It is so relaxing as a a majority a lot of the soundtrack just has that sense of adventure and sense of wonder, especially through the Luma Pulls section. And then things, the intensity ramps up when you've got the escape sequences and the boss battles, especially the final boss, which the final boss battle with Shriek. Oh boy, the music's intense, but it kept me going, and and you still had hints of the original Ori theme, even in the main menu screen, and it is just one of the best soundtracks I've listened to in recent memory. Now, Ori in the Blind Forest, the perfect game. Ori in the Will of the Wisps, overall, the perfect sequel. Now, 110%. You can tell that they put a lot of heart into this project and it has paid off significantly even with the uh, patches that have been released since then to help improve and uh, fix the uh, issues that um, people like me encountered since launch like the, the slow load times for the, uh, the, uh, the slow load times for the maps uh, to sometimes the slow load time for the um, uh, the warping and uh, teleportation, and uh, even even the game crashes, which um, I experienced um, throughout the playthrough. Uh, luckily, I didn't have any game crashes to worry about in the finale. Uh, but yeah, all that time I invested, I am so glad I took my time with this, with the first, with um, with the Will of the Wisps. If you guys haven't played it already, I would definitely recommend it and get more in the blind forest as well play that first and then get will of the wisps and you will be in for one of the best stories in recent memory so that's that then uh but yeah um i mentioned during my playthrough that i was gonna do a giveaway of this game now the shame it, the problem there is, nobody really entered the competition. 
nobody really entered, nobody entered the giveaway. So, don't worry, I'm still going to give a copy of the game to somebody. But uh, they don't know they're getting a copy of the game yet. If they haven't gotten it already. But yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll be I'll be letting them know in due course when they'll be getting their copy of Ori in the Blind Forest and Ori in the Will of the Wisps. Yeah, that's how generous I'm feeling. Like, once they once they know why I'm giving them those two games, they'll understand why. So yeah, that is it for this review of Ori and the Will of the Wisps. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, folks. And uh, if if you if you if you kept watching right to the end, it does help the YouTube um, algorithms uh, a lot. It, it, it does help my algorithms a lot. Uh, to say it. And so if you've watched to the end, guys, I really appreciate that. And if you enjoyed what you saw, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be a dream chaser like myself, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Uh, so yeah. Um, but before, but before we uh, before we go, uh, stay tuned uh, over the next couple of weeks because um, I mentioned in my channel updates that I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be doing uh, Doom Eternal on top of uh, Final Fantasy VII uh, coming back um, uh, tomorrow again at the time of recording. Uh, again, recording is on the 13th, Final Fantasy VII will be back on the 14th. Uh, this review might not be up until the following week. Actually, I might keep this for May 22nd. So that way I've got something, so that way you guys have something to look forward to uh, as well because that, because that marks three years. To the day that um, I was unfortunate enough to be caught in the Manchester Arena. I text if I can find it. I can find it. Where is it? Nope. I will find it, folks. Bear with me. Ah, there, there it is. I won't show it on camera, but what I've got in my hands right now is a copy of the Financial Times that I was interviewed in, and the interview took place the day after what happened in Manchester. Yeah, I'm one of the... I'm one, of, I'm one of the people that got interviewed for the Financial Times. Uh, I was interviewed on the Wednesday. I picked a copy up. I picked a copy up the following day. Because, yeah, it's... Yeah. I picked it up the following day. Manchester Arena attacks May 22nd, interviewed on the 23rd. Here we are, May 24th. And to think I was, and to think, I mean, at that point in my life, I never anticipated being caught up in a terrorist attack. After that night, I never took life for granted. It's the same with this lockdown, definitely not taking life for granted anymore. The time I spend with uh, friends, I'm going to make the most of every single moment that I spend with them. Yeah, uh, on a more serious note, uh, to, those that have, to those that have been reaching out to me since the lockdown started, I really appreciate the kind words that you guys have sent me. Um, tell me to stay strong that I can I can pull through this I'm a lot stronger than I give myself credit for sometimes sometimes on my bad days it's just really difficult to see 
But anyway, uh, like I say, thanks for watching. Um, and um, uh, if you if you if you if you haven't subscribed, like I say, if you haven't subscribed already, make make sure you hit that subscribe button and um, make sure that notification bell goes kaboom. Did somebody say boom? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, that's all, folks. Get out, everybody!